Christ clean me up. Christ clean me up. I ain't got a stain and I'm feeling brand new. Yeah, 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 yeah. Christ clean me up. Yeah, I'm like this. The gospel, my friend, made me righteous. Now I'm walking like Christ in his likeness. I can't live the same, I don't desire it. Hold on, man. We're gonna do it like this. Yeah, I'm like this. The gospel, my friend, made me righteous. Walking like Christ in his likeness. Can't live the same, I don't desire it. Cause I admire him. Yeah, boy, I'm like this. The gospel changed me up, I got a new brain. Can't live the same, I got a new brain. New eyes, new Righteous all because of Christ did Be conformed to his likeness New man's priceless Yeah, he didn't leave me in the muck and mire He got to me up He giving new yeah, desires like By his grace ain't living the same Living in shame, living unashamed Living to give glory to his names Christians read here, we had a change of mind So we literally ain't seeing the same New frame, new frame yeah, boy, I'm like, yeah, my faith in God brought new actions But for I chase worldly passions Righteous, a hey, brother's no longer blind. Yeah, I'm like this. The gospel, my friend, made me righteous. Walking like Christ in his likeness. Can't live the same, I don't desire it. Cause I admire him. Yeah, boy, I'm like this. The gospel changed me up, I got a new brain. Can't live the same, I got a new brain. New wise, new heart, can't do the same. Yeah, got a new name. Yeah, boy, I'm like this. All things theology. Things theology, we chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at all things theology. Yo, grace and peace, <laughs> grace and peace. Welcome back to another episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K Dub. Today, we're gonna talk about William Murphy, we're gonna play. All this sermon, at least all that we can play, because um, for some reason it got cut off at the end. But we're going to play quite a bit of this. You know, this this is some madness that William Murphy, William Murphy is one of the worst. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. No, 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 no. You know, I had to get a, I had to get a new, uh, I had to get a new uh, sound sound clip from a man, William Murphy. Y'all, do y'all want to hear? The sound effect. Put a put a one in the chat if you want to hear the new sound effect. You know, because these false teachers are always talking about fresh. I, I, I'm trying to get the fresh sound effects, right? Put a one in the chat if you want to hear the new sound effect. Because, hey, look, I, I try to advance my game. You know, they advance their false teaching. <laughs> I try to advance production skills, uh, value, theology, right? You know, you want to keep growing, right? And so you never want to stay at the same level. But they, they, you know, they take that same approach when it comes to heresy, right? And so, hey, look, hey, look, we're gonna, we're gonna unleash this sound effect. I, I, I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. I think it's great. Let, let's, let's check it out. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Let me make sure. Okay, here, here we go. Like a bad sermon, heresy's there. <laughs> yes. Like a bad sermon, heresy's there. One more time. One more time for those running late. Like a bad sermon, heresy's there. You know we're going to be playing that a lot. You just know. Because I try to leave, I try to leave him alone, but. Every time I try to leave, something keeps pulling me back, me back. <laughs> I just, you guys will send me a sermon or I'll see something in my channel or, you know, my subscription or not subscription, but uh, my feed. And I'll be like, well, I, I got to take a look at this. I got to take a look at this. Uh, <laughs> first time from South Africa. God bless you. We're going to do it one more time for you then. Like a bad sermon, heresy's there. <laughs> oh, uh, someone is asking, what is the name of the second intro song? It is called Like This. You can get it on kduptrue.com. <laughs> but but you, hey, let's get right into this. Look, let's get right into. It. You guys have know how I like to do. Let's let's get it because we're gonna be playing that a lot. We're gonna be playing that one a lot. 
So guys, this is literally how the sermon starts. Watch the madness that's about to take place. Put your hands together and give the Lord a mighty shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to praise him. I want you to praise him like you and your family have had your last financial struggle. Whoa! I want you to praise him like you got money coming at you from every direction. Just in case you can't hear what was said, William Murphy says, I want you to praise God like you got money coming from <laughs> different directions. Wow. You know, it's like Shaolin says, shout out to my brother Shaolin. If you come to Jesus for money, then he's not your God. Money is right. Yeah. Don't worry. There's going to be a lot of kind of that. You know, you should praise God even if the money doesn't come in. You know, we sing, right? We say, hey, He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of all the glory and honor. But William Murphy says, yeah, if he gives the check. <laughs> oh, don't worry. We're just getting started. Yeah, it wastes no time. Don't worry, sister. Don't worry, brethren. He's just getting started with the uh, <laughs> with the silliness. Like a bad sermon, heresies there. Oh, yeah, we're going we gonna to be, gonna be wearing that one out. I got bread in my Now, some of you uh, new school, you know, you, you, you may not be you may not know about the old false teachers when it comes to the prosperity gospel. But they used to use this phrase money coming to me now in Jesus name. You can look up this clip with a Creflo dollar. I think he's one of them uh, where they're on this stage, literally running around with money on the stage. They're running all over the money. It, it looks bananas, right? And so he has, it's almost like he gives a shout out to the old prosperity, prosperity gospel preachers who was saying, hey, um, you know, the money coming, money coming, right? <laughs> talking to you, stand there and don't move. I ain't talking to you. But if you know I'm talking to you, if I'm your prophet, God told me to put on my prophet's mantle. I came to prophet. <laughs> God told him to put on his prophet mantle. Uh, sir, you're my prophet, false prophet, I guess. Um, but notice again, if you're not agreeing, if you're not shouting and doing all this, well, this ain't for you. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not for you, right? Biblically speaking, sure. But, but notice the gaslighting already going on. Major gaslighting. Gaslight. Or I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. Oh yeah. You, you, cause it wouldn't be a sermon full of false teaching, right? It would not be a, like a bad sermon, heresies there would not be a heretical false teaching sermon right if you didn't gaslight them and make them feel bad if they didn't you know amen and clap you up everything you said right um you know sir you're you're, you're not their prophet <laughs> we have the final prophet the eschatological prophet you know we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come in hard today we're gonna come in hard is this gonna get funky in here because i'm gonna use a bunch of adjectives Money coming from every direction, <laughs> up, down, left, right, diagonal. You know, I mean, my goodness, <laughs> it sounds like a money tornado. Every direction you look in, you got so much money coming at you, some of it you're going to have to turn down. That's, that's a whole new space to be in. Look, look at somebody tell them all money ain't good money, but just know. Now, hey, look, if you're from, you know, uh, maybe uh, more ethnic diverse <laughs> culture <laughs> aka my black people right you know i use that phrase right i used to use that phrase when playing dominoes all money ain't good money just because you can get that little five don't mean you get that five because i'm about to drop this and get a 15 on that domino 
See, some of y'all don't know about that. Some of y'all don't know about that, but I'm going deep. Prophesy. Prophesy. Go deep. I'm a money magnet. I got money coming at me from every Money place. magnet. <laughs> Sounds like a thief. Glory to God. Glory. Do me a favor. I want you to touch the person on your left and your right. Just tell them I speak millions over your life. Oh, yeah. I had to get a new sound effect because I'm tired of these people touching in church. Oh, yeah. I had to get a new sound effect for that. Cause I'm tired of these people touching you in church. Get your hands off me! Get your hands off me. Do not touch me <laughs> in church. Get your hands off me! Oh yeah, we're gonna be playing that one a lot too. Oh don't worry, we 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 going in today. Um, how dare you? I speak more money than you know what to do with over your life. Hey, all that money y'all come in, all that new money coming in, you still need to report to the IRS. <laughs> the money, IRS gonna have all that new money you got in because you don't know what to do with it. <laughs> he said, more money, you know what to do with it. Yeah, the IRS say that too. <laughs> the IRS said, thank you. I prophesy. I wouldn't stand next to nobody who wouldn't touch me. I wouldn't Hold on. You don't want to, hey, don't worry. Don't stand next to me. Go ahead and put a, Go ahead and put don't touch me in the chat if you feeling like I'm feeling. Get your hands off me! Get your hands off of me. I wouldn't sit next to nobody who wouldn't talk to me. Not today. Today ain't I the day. I you and your feelings today. Not today. Look at your neighbor say not today. I ain't come to play with you today. I ain't come to play no games with you or the devil today. I need to be around people who can't. For one reason and for one reason only. Uh oh, let's hear this. To tell the devil that financial struggle ends for me and my family right now. Notice why they're coming to church. And first of all, the devil got his hands all up on y'all. The devil got his hands all up on you. Y'all letting them too. But the notice the reason why they're coming to church. Notice the reason why they're coming to church is to tell the devil <laughs> today is the day uh, financial breakthrough happens. Right. You'll, you know, something to that effect. Well, the devil don't care nothing about you having money. Because you are unholy. Yeah, get your hand out of my pocket. The devil, the devil don't care nothing about you being rich. As long as he can keep y'all in that false gospel, as long as he can keep y'all. As long as he can keep y'all on uh, in William Murphy Church, oh, the devil happy. The devil doing a praise break. The devil doing this. Yeah, y'all, y'all got the devil happy. He don't care about you being rich. So that's why you come to church. I'm glad you're saying it out loud. Like this is gonna be a blast from a sermon, guys. Don't worry, we're just getting started. We're just getting started. But notice why he's coming. To, he wants them coming to church. It's all about that money. It's all about the money. She take my money when I'm in need. Somebody holler right now. Right, right now. now. Right now. Right now. Right now. I got some other stuff that God's working on. But today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't call A.G. Whitworth. Right. They need their money right now. <laughs> Called A.G. Wentworth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of y'all know about that commercial. Some of y'all know about that commercial. Somebody holler today. 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 I need to turn around and tell that person behind you, you're going to get your money right today. You're going to get your money right today. Real quick. I want you to go to 2 Kings. I want you to go to 2 Kings chapter 4. I don't even have a, a like a message. I just got some things I need to decree over you prophetically. Now, we know you don't got no message. We, yeah, we know you ain't got no message. That's obvious. Now, some of y'all are like, wait, what, what, is this the sermon? Guys, the sermon hasn't even started yet, right? He's, he's got them riled up. Y'all while in the chat. Grace and peace to the chat. Got the best chat. Shout out to the chat, man. Shout out to the chat, but <laughs> yeah, the yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, I ain't even got no message. I just want to decree some stuff all over y'all, <laughs> sir. Don't put that on me. 
I just took a bath. I don't need that. But this, what we're about to see now, he's in Second Kings four. He's in Second Kings four. Now, I want you guys look. If you have, if you're on the message, if you have, you know, if you're on the computer, pull up another browser, and we're gonna follow along with this madness, guys. This is this is perspectivalism in a nutshell. Eisegesis to the max, right? Don't worry. Don't worry. Second Kings. Oh, did he say Second Kings four? Yeah, Second Kings chapter four. I have it pulled up on my screen right here. <laughs> and the assertions this man makes about this text is mind blowing. And then we're gonna start giving. <laughs> start we're giving. Start giving. Oh and yeah. Let me, let me say this to y'all. Once the grace gets in the room, anybody can access it. Let me let me say that again, cause your neighbor trying to be in their feelings. Once the grace gets in the room, it's available to whoever wants it. Yo, there's a there's a grace for millions about to hit this room again. I don't look if if everybody get a million in that room, like y'all gonna take up all the money in Atlanta. Like surely they surely not everybody gonna be logically everybody can't be rich logically. I mean, they don't print enough money, to, you know, and like I said, all y'all will be investigated for some kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> money laundering going around. You know, so like I said, man, you, you got to be careful with these. Again, not every lotto you want to win. Come on, Second Kings chapter four. Let's pull up and, the text. Uh, I got my Bible, but let's just read. Everybody turn your attention to the screen. We're going to read together. I need you to, I need you. Let's read together. Now the wife of a member of the company of the prophets cried to Elisha. We're going to read together. Your servant, my husband is dead. Now hold on. I want to stop for just a moment because that word husband. Listen to what this guy says about the word husband. <laughs> hold on. We'll go back. Watch what he says. Three. Everybody, turn your attention to the screen. We're gonna read together. I need you to. I need you. Let's read together. Now, the wife of a member of the company of the prophets cried to Elisha. We're gonna read together. Your servant, my husband, is dead. Now, hold on. I want to stop for just a moment because that word husband, it's a, it's a compounded word. It really means house band. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. No, 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 no. What? Bro, what are you talking about? Out of life. Out of life. I'm tired of your church. This guy, this false teacher, yes, I said it, said the word husband there in 2 Kings 4, uh, verse 1, husband, it really means house band. <laughs> go ahead and put house band in the chat you know what i'm gonna be every time i say that i'm gonna do i'm gonna do it with y'all put house band in the chat now look you don't have to know hebrew to know this man is so false look literally go look up look i'll show you what i did i'll show you what i did literally put second kings 4 1 and put hebrew and guess what's going to happen you're going to get an inner literature that pops up Priya Strong's right. Go to the word where, where it says husband, and what should it? What will it say in the Hebrew? That word is ish. I mean, you know, this is where God declares He's a um, husband to Israel. <laughs> he didn't mean house band. That word literally means man, husband. Literally, go look up the translations for this word. Literally, none of them say house band. Literally, not one. This man, you know, you know, this is how you know he ain't preparing for his sermons. Like, bro, you, like if you you could have you could have at least looked this up because you know what? This man know nobody going to look it up. He know nobody going to look it up. Yes. Randy Watson. <laughs> that boy is good. He know nobody going to look it up. Nobody going to look up. You know why? Turn off the lights. The lights off in this building or something. House band, what? <laughs> but but okay, that's bad, right? Because that's clearly what the word doesn't mean. I see many of you guys are like, yeah, I'm looking it up. What is he talking about? Yeah, what's going on here? Yeah, you like clearly look up the word. It doesn't mean what he says. But watch now that he's got them to buy into a term that it doesn't mean. Right now, watch what he's about to say. <laughs> so it said, I'm no house band. <laughs> you got that right. You bound to the house. Now watch what he says. House band mean. 
that where somebody said, I don't have anything that I'm looking at that bands my house together. Or hope that I'm, this is not just about single women. This is about people who feel threatened, who don't feel safe financially. So, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm laughing because it's so bad. It is so bad. Like, how do you get that out of the text? I got bread in my Yeah, my brother Lawrence said he learned that at VCU. Oh, by the way, uh, William Murphy is currently in ser in seminary. So this is what they're trying. They're, apparently they're teaching. I, I, man, I hope not. But he says, well, house ban really means, you know, he implies that this definition refers to uh, not being financially secure. Now, read that text in mind. <laughs> Your servant, my financially unsecure, is dead. That, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any. I mean. Not only was he wrong with what the word mean, I mean, even his application is bad. Sir, if you want to be financially secure, get you a Roth RRA account, get you some good investments. <laughs> you don't got to be super spiritual and say all this, right? Look, just say, look, I want to be financially secure. It ain't got nothing to do with the tax. I mean, because this tax ain't got nothing to do with you having more money. This is literally a historical narrative, but he, again, perspectivalism has to read themselves into the text. So perspectivalism always sees themselves as the hero, but I'm, I'm taking a while. We're never going to get through this. So let's keep going. You don't have a house ban. You don't have anything that holds your house down. It's, oh my goodness. You living from check to check. I, I want you to look at somebody and prophesy my goodness. tell them that ends right now. It ends right now. Why are they screaming? Like, what did he actually, what did he say? Nobody has their Bible open. Nobody got, I mean, if, look, I trust my pastors. They have a track record of, you know, doing good theology. But if they say a word means something that I've never heard of, I look it up and I'm like, oh, okay, they're right. There's never been a time where I'm like, no, nah, they're wrong, you know, but William Murphy doesn't have that track record. <laughs> he doesn't have a track record of anything, right? He has a, a track record of false teaching. So, I mean, if this man said anything meant anything, you better go look it up. Because more than likely, it's the opposite is the case, right? Um, but yeah, you know, he got to hit him with the tongues, right? <laughs> Yeah, you got to hit them with the tongues after you just promised them money. And, 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 and look, all they're excited about is money. Like like Shaolin said, if you come to Jesus for money, then he's not your God. Money is. And we can see the mammon in this room. If you receive that dance a little bit, just. <laughs> just I don't, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What? What is happening? This dude literally just gave them false teaching and they literally dance after it. That's wild. That is wild. Put a fire in the chat because that's exactly where he's leading these people. That's exactly where where William Murphy is leading them to the pit of hell. I mean, they'll he could literally say anything right now. They're going to they're going to scream and shout. Remember that? Remember the last video we covered where he um they. They they what they didn't even let him finish the sentence. They were already screaming and shouting. Read it. Your servant, my husband is dead. H house you band. Y'all look at the screen and read. <laughs> they not paying attention you know at all. Your servant feared the Lord, but a creditor has come to take my two children as slave. I decree every generational curse ends right now. Now listen, you can play with this if you want to, but there's an anointing in this room. I want you to look at somebody and tell them my children will never know what it's like to be in debt. They'll never know. They'll never know. Yup. Yep. You better open your... Sir, you cannot make that promise. Again, we hope that's the case. We we give them tools to be financially successful. And I, hey, I'm all for financial uh, knowledge. I'm all for that. 
I, you know, I put many practice. Hey, seven, seven, the snowball effect, right? I've, I've, I paid a lot of debt off, right? You know, and so I'm all for being financial, financially success. Now, what I won't do is lie to people and tell them they're going to do some get rich based on some scripture taken out of context. Absolutely not. This is why Atlanta must be stopped. I'm going to borrow a phrase from Rick Caldwell, Dear World Christian, Standard of Truth podcast, and I'm going to up the ante with my own phrase that I've been saying. This is AT Hell, not ATL, AT Hell. Put AT Hell in the chat because Atlanta has some of the worst false teachers known to man, definitely in this generation. But yeah, you can't promise these people this madness, but. He's not he ain't gonna he's not done lying to him. He ain't done. Come out and say what I'm saying. Talk to me, Obi. Damon, talk to me. My children will never know what it's like to live in fear of answering their telephone because a creditor is on the other end. They'll never know it. Say it. They'll never know it. They'll never know it. Oh. So Elisha said. What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? Read verse 3. She answered, your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Tap your neighbor, say, stop discounting your oil. <laughs> Let me actually give you a kind of a parallel in 2 Kings 4, because actually what you're going to see is a miracle. It's a great miracle, actually, that happens. This woman... You know, her children are going to going to be taken from her. Right. And unless she can pay off this debt, my goodness, there is great parallel to Christ and Elijah being a typological Christ. Right. So she only has this jar, this small jar of oil. What we're going to see later in this chapter is this woman is able. Well, I would argue that the prophet, the prophet actually does a miracle by multiplying her oil so that it's able to fill up numerous vessels right let me actually give you some parallels with elijah and jesus one what where they parallel is right they're both a miracle workers they both receive the spirit on the other side of the jordan they're both recognized as true prophets they both cleanse the lepers heal the sick uh reverse death by raising dead sons and restoring them to their mothers we see that there help widows in desperate circumstance uh circumstances Feed the hungry, minister to the Gentiles. Uh, th there's so many parallels when it comes to this. And this would be a great parallel to preach Christ and how he provides for our, us our greatest need in a time where we would be dead. Right. Um, you think that's what William Murphy. <laughs> you think that's what William Murphy got out of that text? Go ahead and put the answer. You think yes or no. I'm, I'm going to put my answer in the chat. What do you think uh, he got out of it? Uh, a pointing people to Christ. He's kind of already, I've already spoiled spoiler alert. Right. Uh, but yeah, th there's so much parallel with with Jesus and Elijah, Elijah being a type of Christ. Um, and, and, and that kind of bothers me in much preaching like this. There's great parallel before you get to any kind of application about us to where all you get in the Old Testament is moralism stories, how we should do likewise. So when you read the Old Testament, it's just do thou likewise. And don't get me wrong. There is a there's a theology of that. But if you miss the Christology, if you miss the uh, the pr prophetic fulfillment in Jesus Christ, again, all you have is be a great David, be like Abraham. And you miss the whole point of the Old Testament if that's your interpretation. Because Jesus' view of the Old Testament is that all the law, prophets, and psalms point to him. So therefore, we should be pointing people to him. You got to stop discounting your oil. Your oil might not be somebody else's oil, but it's still oil. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look at somebody say, it's still oil. It's still oil. Some of y'all need to get y'all oil changed because y'all still at this man's church breaking down. He said, go outside. That's your problem. You've been looking at you. You looking in the house. God's oh about goodness. to enlarge your territory. <laughs> what? Slap somebody and tell what? them go outside. Bro, what are you talking about, man? And sir, what did I say about touching me? Get your hands 
hands off me! Go outside. 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 Now this is uncomfortable, but this is the season you're gonna have to go outside. Go outside and borrow. <laughs> she literally went. So he's again, he's making this all some kind of parallel to our life. I mean, she literally went outside. He's he's like, you got to go outside is referring to, uh, you know, going to where someone's uncomfortable. <laughs> like, notice the parallels, you know? Yeah, he said slap. That's what I say. Get your hands off me! How dare you? Vessels from all your neighbors. What kind of vessels? How many? Go back. Let's read that again. Go outside and borrow vessels from all your neighbors. Hold on, let me pause for just a moment. This is not the time to be trying to keep up appearances. <laughs> this man had a Gucci shirt on last week preaching. Talk about, <laughs> this ain't the time to <laughs> keep up with appearances. Sir, hush. Sir, hush. You the last one to be talking about this message. This message ain't, you can't be saying this. Look at somebody and tell them, let your pride go. Let your pride go. Let your pride go. Let, look, look at him again. Say, let your pride. You still looking at me. I need you to look at your neighbor and talk to them. Let your pride go. Well, I don't want to ask nobody for nothing. Okay, then. Okay. Go outside and borrow vessels from your neighbors. What kind of vessels? All right, don't, don't listen. Empty vessels. Stop trying to do what somebody else has already done. What? What? You stop, stop asking. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Filled. You need an empty vessel. Because you got oil. Say it. Forget your neighbor. Talk to yourself. Tell yourself, I got oil. I got oil. I got oil. Come on. Go. Bob, but not just a few. Not just a few, not just a few, and, and wait a minute, go back, we missed something, and not just a few, here it is, what's the next verse, and they kept bringing vessels, and she kept pouring, when the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel, but he said to her, there are no more vessels. Then the oil stopped flowing. And she came and told the man of God. What did he say? What else? What else? <laughs> I'm laughing at a comment. I gotta put this screen on the screen. <laughs> she said, I got I got oil in my pocket. <laughs> I got all in my pocket. Hold on, hold on a second. I got bread in my pocket. Bread in my pocket. I got bread in my pocket. I got bread in my pocket. I got bread in my pocket. Go on and put some oil in the chat. Some bread in the chat. <laughs> That's a good one. You and your children. You and your children. Live off the rest. If I was going to take a top of it, it'd be standing on business. Look at yeah, that, the, the sermon, I guess, is titled Standing, in, standing on Business. <laughs> standing on Business. My goodness. <laughs> you trying to start a business. And you, yeah, yeah, it's a good way to start a business by scheming other people. Now, this isn't a Christian. This isn't Christian. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't worry. I see some people pointing it out. We're going to get we're going to get to that later in the uh, video. But but yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this man oil bread. This sermon got no thesis, no plot, no main point. It's everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Somebody say I'm standing on business. Just a few things I need to read to you. We're going to give in a minute. How many came with a seed ready to sow? No, they, they're excited to sow, but you, the reason why they want to sow, i.e. give their money, is because they want to get money. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, give, not expecting anything in return, that like we give. 
Not, I mean, this is literally covetousness. He's literally promoting covetousness. Again, they want to give because they want that Gucci shirt you had on last week. Don't worry, we're going to get to that. Do me a favor, look at somebody, tell them scared money don't make money. Scared money don't make money. And eisegesis don't make sound Christians. So what's your point? See, the devil wants you in fear concerning your money and your man of God. Sit down for a second. The devil wants you in fear. <laughs> They've been standing for 20 minutes. Money. Let me let you get seated. Come on, get yourself together. <laughs> the devil wants you in fear concerning your money and your man of God. Why? So that you mislabel and mismanage what God has already given you and your household to do business and to create generational wealth. The text teaches us that submission to the prophet and obedience to the prophetic word can and will change your life and your legacy forever. So then the question is, what do I need to know to unlock the plan of God? Ask your neighbor, what do I need to know to unlock the plan of God to prosper me and my family. I have never heard nobody preach more about money than William Murphy. Like literally every ever since I've heard about him, every sermon has involved money. I'm, I'm not I'm not even kidding. I, I can't say that about anybody, but at every sermon that I've listened to with William, William Murphy, the main point, not even just a reference, the main point of the sermon was how you going to get rich. I'm not even joking. Hold on a second. You mean God has a plan to prosper me and my family? Look at somebody and yeah. say, absolutely. Yeah, he does. It's called the gospel, sir. It's called the gospel. But you twisted that. Um, how dare you? So what do I need to know, Ebony? What do I need to know to unlock the plan of God to prosper me and my family? Number one, you need to know what you want God to do. That's why I had you to write it on a card because ain't no sense of you sowing and you just sow. I know what they told you. Oh, you just give because you love God. That's half of the truth. You got to give and you got to learn how to target your seed. If you actually listen to what this joker just said, he's arguing you should not just give because you love God. <laughs> right. He want to see the saints. You should. He's actually arguing you should give because you want to see something in return. Yeah. So tithing apparently is an investment. <laughs> this ain't free giving. This sounds like an investment you're making. Again, this makes God very transactional. Very transactional. No, 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 no. You got to tell your neighbor, you got to know what you want God to do. Sir, what did I tell you about touching me? Get your hands off me. Before you come to this microphone, you got to come to this mic already with it in your mind and already with it in your on your altar. What you want God to do again. This man is teaching them to covet. <laughs> yeah, he's got a line of TVs on the side. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He And he got like uh, the Facebook comments on the side, too. Yeah, because nothing says <laughs> I'm preaching a good message like seeing uh, the comments <laughs> during my message. I couldn't imagine how distracted I was if I was preaching a sermon and you literally could see <laughs> people's comments as you're preaching. Yeah, it sounds like ego scratching there. I, I got to give you a minute to ponder this because some of y'all still tripping. You're like, I'm going to do it because Bishop said, no, nah, you got to do it because you have an expectation of the supernatural. Oh, my goodness. What do you want God to do? <laughs> Tell your neighbor real quick. Tell them because they're going. I wish they actually felt that way about God. God's going to do what he said he'll do. Right. In all things. Right. His sovereignty, his providence. But this man literally his message is God's going to do what you want him to do because you gave <laughs> like this is prosperity gospel on steroids like this. Like there's there's prosperity go gospel light. You have your neo prosperity gospel. Uh, probably like Mike Todd would be in that area. And then you have like your Benny Hinn. This guy literally is, I mean, maybe he's per passing Benny Hinn with this level of blasphemy. Now, I know that's a lot to say, but I've listened to a numerous sermons to say 
yeah, this guy is making God a genie. All you got to do is rub God's arm a little bit, scratch his belly, right? Twist his arm behind his back and God will just cough up the cash. God is not transactional. This is this is blasphemous teaching here. Agree with you. What do you want God to do? What what do you want God? You all you should already know. I've been talking to you about this for six weeks. What did you write? Oh, someone has a good idea. Said maybe we should bombard. Uh, <laughs> someone maybe we should bombard the uh, comment section in real time. Can you imagine my comments popping up on his screen in real time? <laughs> That's a good idea. That's hilarious. Some of y'all like I changed my mind. That's okay. What do you want God to do? Some of y'all ask God for stuff that you could do if you go back to school for two years. No, 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 no. No, what do you want God to do? And notice he's asking, don't be, don't ask for little stuff. Go, if you're going to ask God for something, go big, go hard. Don't ask God to supply your, your needs, right, for food. No, no, no. No, no, don't do that. You can do that if you just got a little old job. Go big. Go ask God for a million, quadrillion, fulfilling billion dollars, right? That's unheard of money. <laughs> Literally, I never heard of that. Yeah, right? Go ask for God. The biggest idolatrous thing you can ask God for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask that, right? My goodness. Tell them what they say. What they say. He want to know because he greedy. Did they give you something that they could do if they just clear up their credit? That we're not talking about that. No, what what do you want God? What do you want God to do? That's the first thing. The second thing is you got to know what you have in your house. What do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? What did what did the woman of God say she had in her house? Y'all remember look at somebody and tell them that anointing you got is enough. That or not, you got to know what you have in you. You have oil. Watch this. And thirdly, you got to know what you have around you. This is why some of y'all can't get blessed because you stuck up and you you think you better than other folks. You live it. You living around your answer, but won't even speak to them. You you living. You're living around your answer prayer, but you've been acting real crazy with their children. And the devil used that to create an offense between you and your answer. You got to know what you got around you. Look at somebody tell them, go home and be nice tonight. Go home. Go home and be nice. Go home and be Now, what you're about to hear is the classic, be nice to everybody because you never know when they might get to come up and might throw you a little something, something on the end of that. Gaslight. Yes, like, I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. I didn't know that's why we're nice to people. <laughs> Could you? This is literally, you know, you're you have an ulterior motive at the end, right? Don't worry, he's about to even say worse than this. Yeah, yeah, you be nice to people, not because you know the Bible says so. I mean, come on, man. I mean, the Bible ain't going to get you rich, right? I mean, we got we got to get that oil. We got to get that. We got to get that oil. I got bread in my pocket. Yeah, this dude, big man. You. Yeah, 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 but watch, he's going to get worse to being nice to people. You got to be nice, right? You ever met people like that? They're super nice for no reason. You're like, hold on. <laughs> what do you want, right? What do you, what do you want from me? Pull their garbage can in. Go home and be nice. <laughs> Pull their garbage can out. Go home and be nice. Let, let, them, let their people park in front of your house. My goodness. Let, let their people. William Murphy got a park here sign in front of his house. <laughs> free parking no no you're not parking in front of my house look i got two cars i need those spots <laughs> look I, you can't be parking in front of my crib and look you get your little money i don't want it you good you keep your money park in front of your apartment you don't even know it but the people parking in front of your apartment are are your future clients oh my goodness but your neighbor won't recommend your business because you got a nasty attitude. And sir, you just plain nasty. I seen how you talk during these sermons. You just nasty. Straight nasty. I ain't going to repeat the nasty stuff you be saying from the pulpit, sir, but you're nasty. 
and your and your church and your church members know you're nasty. But how, but back to the point. How about we just be nice to people? Because the Bible says be kind to one another. Why is the Bible not enough of a motivation? Why is pleasing God not enough motivation, sir? If I have to finagle you to obey God, sir, you probably don't have the spirit of God. If I have to just twist your arm and, and find some materialism way to get you to obey God, it's you probably don't have the spirit. Let me just say that. Look at somebody and tell them you got to know what's around you. You got to know what's around you. All right. What was the first thing I told you? What's the first thing you have to know? You got to. Sir, I forgot the point because this sermon has been so bad. Something about a house band. <laughs> Put house band in the chat. God, that's uh, that's unforgettable. That's unforgettable. No. Put it. Can y'all read that? You got to read it. That's the cheat sheet. You got to know what? To remind your neighbor. Remind your neighbor what they told you they wanted God to do. I know you forgot. Let them tell you again. Let them tell you again. What, what, what do you want God to do? You got to know what you want God to do. The second no is you got to know what you have in your house. The third no is you got to know what you have around you. Let me tell you this. Everything you need to go to your next level, it's either in your house or outside your house. What, what does that even mean? So my breakthrough is either. Well, I mean, that's kind of I mean, obviously, that would be kind of obvious from his perspective. Either your breakthrough is in your house or outside of your house. <laughs> that was the only two options. <laughs> I mean, th th but this is, wh what are we talking about here? What, what does it have to do with, guys, What where do we go from 2 Kings 4? What does this have to do with 2 Kings 4? I, I like if I literally never heard of William Murphy, it's like, man, I'm looking for a good church. You know, I'm let me come to the church. Hey, I heard of, I've heard from a great, from through the grapevine in the Atlanta grapevine, which is, <laughs> that grapevine kill you. But, through the grapevine, I heard, hey, this Dream Center Church of Atlanta, right? Okay, let me come here. And I came here and listened to this church. I would be so lost. I would be so lost just sitting there like this. Like, what is this man talking about? What is going on in this sermon? Whose pastor is this? I would have a lot of questions. Not listening to me. Everything you need to clear up your credit and to go to your next level is either in your house or right outside your house. Sir, if you want to clean up your credit, look, you don't have to get super spiritual. You want to clean up your credit? Pay out some of that debt. That's very simple. <laughs> I would argue that's a biblical message. But first, second Kings four ain't it, bro. Second Kings four ain't it. Look at somebody and tell them it's in your hood. It's in your hood. My goodness. You got to know what you have around you. Okay, here's the fourth thing. You got to know what to do with the product. You got, look, look at. So are we still, what are we still, product? Is this drug money? Maybe this is drug money, money laundering going on here. Yeah, maybe that's what your church is, a money laundering facility. That's probably why it costs so much to run. What do you say a month? $360,000 a month to run this church? My goodness. Somebody, look at, put uh, Adner, put verse 7 on the screen. I want y'all to see this. You got to know what to do with the product. You got to know what to do with the product. She came and told the man of God, and the man of God said, go sell it. Don't give it. Oh, uh, maybe I get it now. Maybe he's talking about hair products since he's talking about all that oil. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of black women in Atlanta. I know that. They talking about that oil product. Away. What what you thought was a hobby? Did you hear that? What you thought was just something that y'all just used around the house. <laughs> you got to look at that thing different. It's money in that. You got what what do you have in your house? Now you got to know what to do with what you have in your house. What's the next one? You got to know what to do with the product. Here it is. You got to know what to do with the profit. The F-I-T-S. You got to know what to do with the profits. Because see, some of y'all get money and go shopping. You're like, Lord, I want a house this year. No, you don't. 
Bro, didn't you just promise them last sermon they're going to get a house with their name on it? <laughs> now, all of a sudden, God don't want them to have that house. Sir, and then, in, you know, the new year, you told them they're going to get three houses with their name on it. You got to make it make up your mind, sir. Make up your minds. And then I don't know if you caught that earlier. He said, don't don't sell. Don't give that money away. <laughs> so, yeah, stingy, a stingy spirit. huh? Your house, your house is in your closet. Your down payment is sitting outside under a carport. Wait, this dude literally had a, a Gucci sweater on. That thing probably cost him a, 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 a grand. He cost him a grand, right? It probably cost him a little penny. <laughs> he got the nerve to talk about them. <laughs> they trying to follow their profit, right? Uh, P-H-E-T. <laughs> you got to know what to do with the profit. The man of God said, sell the oil and then do what? Hold on, because see, look at y'all. Y'all like, I'm going to Cancun. No, you're not. <laughs> you're going to come back from Cancun and your car going to be gone. <laughs> you got to know what to do with the profit. Lay your hand on your neighbor. Tell him I speak money management over you. Get your hands off me! Sir, I done told you about touching me. That I need you to get, get, your, get your neighbor's attention. Make them look you in the eye. Okay, this is real uncomfortable, but look them in the eye. Just, it's only going to be 12 seconds. Look them in the eye. <laughs> I said look them in the eye. Hey, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I, you ever, I don't like looking people in the eye like for that long. I mean, I'm going a, I'm to a glance you in the eye and look at your shoulder. <laughs> you know, I, what, what are we looking at my eye for? I'm going to think something wrong with something in my teeth or something. Like, what are you, what are you staring at me romantically? you still looking at me like, Bishop, I can't. I can't do it. I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Because, yeah, I can't do it. Ooh, I feel like I'm going to die. I can't do it. Hurry up. Okay, <laughs> look him in the eye. Tell him from this moment forward, you will be fiscally responsible. You are not going to mismanage the profits. How can you promise that they're, they're going to? I mean, how, how could you say that this is going to happen? You're going to be financially, fiscally responsible. I mean, yeah, you, you hope that they will. But but even being fiscally responsible doesn't equate to being millionaire. Right. Right. Like there are many people who live, you know, meager. You know, let's say they make 50,000 a year and. You know, they get by, but they get by because they are financially responsible. I mean, this is this is just silly. <laughs> you got to know you got to know what to do with the product. Sell it. Stop giving it away. Stop giving it away. Did you hear what I said? You hear what he's saying? Stop giving away. So stop being generous. But we should give they should be generous and give it to you. So, hey, look, they're going to follow your advice. You ain't going to have no tithe. Hey, if they want to be generous to somebody, they, they can. They don't have to give all their money to you again. Yeah, he wants them to give their money to him. But not other people. Right. With all those TVs back there. You don't need those TVs. Get that away. But you ain't going to do that. Listen. People who don't respect your time don't respect you. What? <laughs> Look at somebody and tell them from here on out, my time costs. My, 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 I'm not. Now he telling on himself. Because, you know, in order to get a meeting, he, he, he got to see some kind of profit. No, sir. They don't treat people like transactions where, you know, you, in order to meet with your church members or people who want to have lunch with you, you're like, well, what's. What's it going to benefit me? This is treating people like dollar signs, which you already are. Giving away my time. I'm not. No, my. Oh, my. Watch this. My time is oil. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, I heard you. It was dumb. <laughs> Dr. New, my time is oil. Don't give it away. 
Don't give it away. Don't give it away. You got to know what to do with the product. You got to know what to do with the profits. Watch this. And then you have to know what to do with the produce. What in the lettuce, tomato, and vegetables is going on here? Put, put it back on the screen. I, I'm not preaching. I'm just talking. Just put it back on the screen. Verse 7. You got to know what to do with the product. You got to know what to do with the profit. And then you got to know what to do with the produce. Here it is. Put verse 7 back on the screen. I want you to see it. The hey, go on and put lettuce, tomato, and onions in the chat. Because this man talking about produce now. Prophet says, this is why you got to be connected to, to authentic prophetic ministry. The prophet said, go sell it. We standing on business. <laughs> Pay off all your bills. I know you ain't had a new bag in a long time. That's okay. That's okay. You're going to be able to buy a bag store. If you, if you, see, y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe that. Y'all like, y'all like. Sell the oil. Pay your debts. And you. Do me a favor. Look at somebody and say, you got to trust the process. You got to trust the process. What is Now, I'm a big sports fan. I remember the last team that said that. <laughs> Ain't winning no championship, barely making the playoffs. You know, yeah, the Philadelphia 76ers kept saying that for, for like five years. They kept saying this for five years. Ain't nothing happened to them. So, I don't know if you want to be going around saying that, sir. Process. Sell the oil. Pay your debt. And then. He <laughs> Appreciate sis for the super chat. She says, so, uh, hold on, let me, uh, let me fix this. Uh oh. Hold on. Look, he, he messing with my, my work over here. <laughs> he says, somebody said he talking about that. THC and CBO from Jamal Weed. Yeah. Yeah, these people. You know, there's a connection between him and Jamal. I'll bring that out later. But, uh, yeah, man, this man's talking nonsense here. Say exist. He didn't say barely make it. Matter of fact, he said it's going to be enough for your generation. And the generation coming after you. Prophesy. That sound like generational wealth to me. Yeah, but how does this like? Let's let me grant you all the nonsense you're talking about is about her, right? It's it's not. But how does her being rich mean that you're gonna be rich? <laughs> that don't make sense. If it's enough for me and my children to live. That sound like some serious money. I need about a thousand of y'all to get on your feet. Oh my goodness. And give God. Before the praise break, I'm going to put a bread in the pocket. I got bread in my 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 pocket. Going to put bread in the chat. Because you know what? I'm tired of the church. How can they? Like, here's here's it. You guys may be hearing this, hearing a sermon from him for the first, second, third time, but they hear this every week for 52 weeks. 52 times a year, y'all hear this, and y'all not tired of this? That's what I'm asking. Y'all ain't tired of this? The best shout you can give him. I need you to shout like God's getting ready to get you out of debt. Like you all yeah, yeah, yeah. I need you to shout like God done already got you out of the debt. You know that sin debt? See, they won't be screaming that loud for that because that ain't important to them. You know, him canceling the debt, nailing it to the cross like Colossians speaks of. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I mean, that's that's good news. That's that's kind of good news. Right. You know, good God. but they want that bread in their pocket. 
right? They want that bread in that pocket. Yeah. Hey, what what about that debt being canceled, sir? Oh yeah, it's tax season. That's why all these tithing messages coming out, right? Notice, notice why they giving to help with their taxes. <laughs> yeah, this is a write-off. See, this is why. This, don't be impressed when all these people give a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, Mike Todd, right? Because this is just a tax write-off. Yeah, you got to give all that money because your church making millions. So you got to be. That's a that giving is a tax write-off. Wait, well, you ain't fooling nobody. Oh, I didn't come to play with you. I didn't come to play with you. God said that to prophesy, this is the season that you are about to step prophesy. out. Prophesy! Prophesy! If you walk away from this mic, you're going to be in a season where you overcome because you're overdue. And when you get back to your seat, you're going to be in overflow. And sir, you are overpaid. And I hope this sermon's almost over. You overdue. You Get overdue. your hands off me! What I tell you about touching me? was just testing your faith. God was trying to see what you gonna do with what you got in your house. God was trying to see what you was gonna do when you got a little money in your hand. God, God say, and since I know I can trust you, you and the next generation gonna live in overflow. Somebody Sir, God entrusts himself to no one. God entrusts himself to no one. Why would God trust y'all? <laughs> like, like, first of all, God don't trust nobody. But why would he trust y'all? Y'all up here walking it out in church. Y'all going to be the last one he would, he would trust. God entrusts himself to no man. Why would God trust you? I mean, think about that. Trust, faith are, uh, you know, synonymous terms. Why would he put his faith, his trust in you? A mere man. Five people and shout overflow. Just come on. The number five is significant. It's the number of grace. Catch five <laughs> people and holler. Get God your hands God. off me. Touch five people and holler. What I say about touching me. Uh, you ever touch me, you're going to lose that left one because you already slapped me with that right one. Get your hands off me. Over. <laughs> Grab a hold of five people and holler. Oh. <laughs> money is about to flow in your house my goodness money is about to flow in your business money is about to flow through your gift somebody holler over that's all i got that's all i got that's all he got so let me let me see you to just start praying in the Holy Ghost. We're breaking up this battleground so when your seed hit it, immediately it's going to start producing fruit. So he said, hey, we're going to break up the this ground and we're going to throw that seed in this guy's planter now. He's throwing this seed in there and that's going to give them the overflow, i.e. them being millionaires. I need y'all to help me break up this fallow ground real quick. Somebody. My goodness. Hey! Some of y'all was fasting this week. I, I need you to clap your hands like God is responding to your sacrifice already. So now the, the tithing is a sacrifice. My goodness. This sermon is so bad. This sermon is so bad. Spakes, I need you to pray 
praise him like he's already responding to your sacrifice. <laughs> so it's a got a notebook you know what i would like to see i would like to see somebody notes the sermon man that thing gotta be all over the place <laughs> he got a, a line here line there it's like a football play right that that them notes for this sermon gotta be everywhere and and just like you gotta be confused what was the sermon about um the sermon was about oil house bands um breaking up the ground and something about <laughs> right this this sermon's everywhere yeah no reverence in this sermon right none at all let's get ready to go so this is what we're gonna do this is what we're gonna do god's getting ready to respond supernaturally talk to yourself tell yourself god's getting ready to respond supernaturally God has already responded. God, God has already put things in motion. Mm. Woo. Will you encourage your neighbor? Tell him God's already put some stuff in motion. Mm -hmm. He already put some stuff in motion. Mm -hmm. Listen, just, just in case you're in the room and you have no idea what's happening. Sir, they would not be the only one. <laughs> They would not be the only one. You know what I mean? Um, how dare you? No one knows. No one knows what this sermon's about. Not even you. This is called Super Sunday. It's the Sunday where collectively and individually we bring God what's called a first fruit offering. It's an over and above offering. It's not the weekly tithe or offering. It's not the offering that we give to our prophet. It, it's an over and above offering. It's, it's not all of what you have, but it's a chosen portion. It's a lump sum. It's a, it's a best portion. So, and that's where their sermon and their live stream cut off. I don't know why. But notice, uh, their Super Sunday, right? This is the, the Super Bowl of their Sunday giving. So, but notice how many offerings they got. They got, you know, the regular offering. You got the tithes. And then you got your best portion offering. And then you got your giving to the pastor. To the prophet my goodness how many offering plates do y'all take around there now at my church this is how we give i think this is a good way you let the members know hey you should be giving give freely to the church you know whether y'all do that monthly weekly you know to y'all's conscience y'all decide but we put our offering in the back and it is rarely mentioned members know every member know hey when you give it's in the back we don't pass no plate around. We ain't doing no praise bait. Don't do not Now I'm, I'm not against passing the plate, but I think there's a way you can do it, which is honorable is what I'm, what I'm getting at. But I like the way we do it. And so, uh, my goodness, what a, a theological train wreck. I'm going to take some questions here in a second, but before I do that, I do want to look at a website and that is, um, William Murphy's website here. Let me do something right quick. And, uh, you know, you know, as much as I've been dealing with this content, I've never actually gone to his website. But notice this, uh, you know, they got their website, right? All this. Nah, nah, nah. Right. He's he's got a book coming out. It's called Bigger. <laughs> it's probably about <laughs> uh, I, I, something tells me this has to be about uh, money, you know, two and one. Yeah, that's definitely about money. Um. Let's see about our pastors. Let's see. Look at this. Of course, it's him and his wife. What is a first assistant? Now, they consider her a pastor, but notice I, I have no clue what a first assistant even does. Um, nonsense. But I didn't know this, I, uh, that William Murphy, he was actually at Jamal Bryant's church before Jamal Bryant got there. Uh, New Birth Church. So I think that was when... Um, Eddie Long was there probably. Um, so, so what a mess, what a mess. Um, but here's what I did want to look at. Cause you, you know, very little of their website has to do with anything about Jesus and the gospel. Yes. Jesus names mentioned. Yes. Gospels mentioned, but explaining these things, like most churchmen have a about us section, which actually explains the gospel or very little, you know, Jesus died for our sins. They don't even got that on this website. <laughs> 
Uh, the only thing they have about Jesus really is he's at the center of our worship, which we just saw their worship. We just saw we just saw their worship. I, I didn't see anything about Jesus in that. Um, and then they talk about Jesus Christ and keeping his gospel relevant, which we know that's all that's that's walking it out. Right. You got to be relevant. Um, here is what I did want to look at, and it's the section called wealth development. <laughs> now, it is wild that this wealth development is as one of their core foundational beliefs. Very wild. Right. But notice what it says. It says we covenant to have a perpetual focus on the plans of God to prosper his people in the earth and to provide both biblical and secular applications for doing so. We will teach and train biblical principles concerning finances and operate in a twofold formula for increase, both corporately and individual, individually, which he quotes Genesis 128, but that's that has nothing to do about money. Um, so <laughs> again, one of their core principles is, hey, we're going to get you money. That's wild that that's is literally on their church website. Um, they have a contact section, so maybe I'll uh, <laughs> send an email. But, but this is wild, too. Like, I, I, again, I, I'm not. I'm like people have it. I'm not against having people have merch. I'm, I'm trying to get merch myself, uh, but the merch they have is kind of weird. I mean, scared money don't make money hoodie <laughs> or crew neck crew, crew. Yeah, crew neck black excellence T-shirt <laughs> uh, limited edition. I love my church. Yeah, which which was funny. Because on one of the about us sections, it says this. Uh, let me find this. Oh, yeah. We're we will be their focus will be on making disciples and the building of people, not a church. But then they got a <laughs> they got a I love my church shirt, which that's fine. But that kind of contradicts what you're saying on there. They got a varsity cardigan. <laughs> you want to be like William Murphy in all peril and then a dreamer tote. Of course, you got your Black History Month. You got your Black History Month gear. You know, you don't get you a Black History Month shirt, a Dreamer winter hoodie. My, my goodness. Um, we're, we're, Oh, yeah. Look at these Dreamer jackets. My goodness. OK, look, I get I, I'm, I'm not saying this is this is bad to have merch, but these are some ugly shirts. These are some ugly jackets. Why would I want this? Why would I want maybe maybe? Hey, look, I'm not the biggest fashionable person. I mean, I'm pretty like, hey, T-shirt and 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 some, uh, you know. Yeah, I'm pretty much a T-shirt guy, you know, I you know, some sweats. So I'm not all decked out fashionably, but I would never be caught wearing this jean jacket. I would never be caught wearing this. Go and put some jeans in the chat for this jean jacket go and put some jeans in the chat yeah 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 so i ain't the only one. Oh snap hold on there's a let's chat y'all see this <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a type of question have you read your bible let's see if i get a, a chat back <laughs> This is live. Oh, no, it ain't no live chat. Hey there, please leave your details so we can contact you, even if you are no longer on the site. Oh, no, I want to have a live chat with somebody. I wanted to have a chat. <laughs> Why you got a chat if I can't ch ch chat you? You need to just have that the contact. Y'all playing with me over here. Y'all playing games. <laughs> All right, y'all, we're going to take some questions. <laughs> 